Hi, good afternoon or good morning, everybody who's joined us. Uh, I'm Ian MacArthur. I am one of the account managers here at uh, SolidCAD out of Richmond Hill. Um, myself and Masan will be going over uh, Formit, which is a, an Autodesk product found within the AEC collection. Uh, before we do, I'm just going to go over a little bit about who we are and what we do. As a little bit of a refresher, just in case anybody in attendance doesn't know really who we are. Uh, so you should be able to see my screen. We can go over a few slides really quickly here. So what do we do? SolidCAD, other than being an Autodesk reseller, uh, we provide other professional services and services related to the stuff we sell. Uh, so we do training, we do BIM consulting and BIM management services, uh, help companies with data management and collaboration, scan to BIM services, technical workflow assessments, uh, pretty well anything related to your Autodesk products and, and a lot of the other products that we support, sort of try and get you from start to finish as best as possible. These are some of the partner products that uh, are partners we work with. So we are an Autodesk Platinum partner. We're the only one in Canada um, at that level. We're also a Platinum partner of Bluebeam, the PDF solution for the AEC industry. Uh, some of the more recent partners we've uh, begun working with are like CTC, which specializes specifically in productivity tools for both Revit, and they've really newly sort of revamped their uh, civil 3D tools which are now being released and sort of being talked about a lot more. Uh, we have our scanning partners, companies like Faro, Leica, and Matterport, visualization uh, with tools like V-Ray from Chaos Group and Lumion. Uh, and two newer ones are MBS, which is a specialized or a specking tool. Uh, it's an actual platform and, and authoring tool for specs, specifically designed for, for, for writing specifications. Knowledge Smart is a skills assessment training tool. You get a sense for people's ability level using tools like AutoCAD, Revit, even Microsoft Office products for people who are doing hiring and trying to you know, a prospect employee's potential skill level. This is a really good way to sort of see where they are compared to sort of the industry standards. We've got offices across Canada, all the way from Burnaby um, to Halifax, Nova Scotia. Uh, with different training facilities all over Canada is sort of displayed here on this slide. For those who don't know, if you are a customer of SolidCAD with Autodesk products or, or, or others, we do provide complimentary technical support through our Solid Assist program. They can help out with installation issues, you know, files aren't opening correctly, you're receiving weird error messages. They're the best resource you can go to by submitting a ticket either by email or giving them a call on the phone number displayed there great resource that's available to anybody who purchases their software through SolidCAD. We've also started offering BIM process assessments. These are really deep dives into our customers' workflows from um, how they're creating their designs and models, how they manage the data, and how they share it with others. Uh, and we try and find ways in which you can improve your processes for better results, allowing you to do more projects. Another new service we've sort of entered into is package service offerings. These are designed to be turnkey solutions for uh, products like getting BIM 360 design and docs up and running and implemented properly, as well as Bluebeam. That's it for the introduction. I'm going to switch over to Masan now, who's going to go through Formit and everything it's capable of. Okay, thank you very much, Ian. Uh, I'm going to show my screen and um, if you can verify um, if you can see my screen right now. Yep, just came up. Excellent. So welcome everybody. Um, this webinar is for Formit, a new um, and very powerful conceptual design and idea iteration tool um, that just recently came in under um, the or AEC package for Autodesk. Um, just a little bit of understanding of what is the tool and what is the uh, what is the 
uh, thing that it has uh, for you and your business. First of all, we were actually using uh, a lot of different competitive tools for creating um, and visualizing uh, and doing the conceptual design. Uh, a lot of those tools have been uh, here for a long time. Um, and um, Formit is, is not um, anything, uh, anything that is, um, if, um, that is different from them, but there are a lot of different tools that are recently added to, to Formit that is uh, making it in such a special product. And I'm going to, uh, if you can uh, give me five minutes, I'm going to uh, all of those very special things, uh, tips and tricks that might be um, making it considerable for, for your design iteration. Uh, first of all, uh, Formit has been um, added to the AEC tools for a couple of months right now. And pr prior to that, it was an in individual product. Um, if you are going to be going to AEC product um, packages, um, you know that there are a lot of different uh, good tools such as Revit, uh, AutoCAD files, uh, Revit Live, um, all of those uh, mechanical and structural tools that are an added benefit to the businesses. And, um, and if, if the, the Formit Pro was, um, was a, a consideration for your business, it is actually coming in free in the product packages. Um, the other thing that uh, I wanted to talk to you about is that um, there are a lot of uh, support cases on the back of the business. So when you're going to be on the Autodesk website, the overview and this, uh, the support and learning product are going to be updated every single day. So there are a lot of different resources that are updated every single day in Autodesk, which is making a very good learning tool for you guys. Uh, to be getting into uh, getting a hands off of that. And if even if you don't want to invest in an AEC package, it is still a very good tool because there are free trials to be working on Formit and Formit Pro inversion. Um, you can just basically get your hands wet with it right now today for free. Uh, what is the difference between the Formit and Formit Pro? Um, I'm actually having a session in here. So basically to wrap up all of these uh, the differences between the products is that everything that you're actually drawing with it is going to be um, comparable and, and available for you in both Formit and Formit Pro. Um, the things that are having to do with analysis and uh, uh, interoperability uh, in the Formit Pro is, is making it a lot better and a lot faster experience for you. Um, also, we are going to be having, uh, if you're actually working on a free version of the Formit, you don't need to download the software. It is going to be a web application for you so that whenever you want to be iterating, you can go ahead on um, on the website and then start iterating, even though the Formit Pro version is making it a lot faster for you, whereas right now I'm having it here, uh, because uh, all of those uh, analysis tools and collaboration tools um, are added inside of the software. Um, so to wrap up, the Formit and Formit Pro is um, is a very powerful BIM initiation, initiating and collaborating uh, tool package, which is also having a lot of other tools that is, um, that is integrated in the AEC um, added up for the mobility and uh, compatibility, such as Dynamo Studio, um, the compatibility of it with, with Revit, um, the added benefit that uh, all of your SketchUps now 
can be added directly to Revit or added to Formit, created the iterations, um, doing the editing modes and everything, and then get out of the Formit and go to the um, uh, Revit automatically for the fabrication and the uh, customization tools. Okay, so let's go into um, the basic tools um, of uh, Formit Pro. As you can see, I was um, adding this uh, um, software version on my computer and the user interface is going to be very easy, very, um, very uh, self-explanatory. Uh, you're going to be having uh, the, the tools uh, toolbar on the top. You're going to be having uh, uh, all of the properties and um, some some more bars for uh, for your creation of the project. For example, if you're going to be cre creating any of those tools like a line, um, first of all, all of those sh those shortcuts are very compatible with the AutoCAD and Revit. Uh, if you're pressing L, for example, it is going to be automatically making a line for you. But also all of the, those tools that you're going to be getting your hands off um, of that, they, they are having some more uh, rules of information for you to be creating um, the, 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 more, the most accurate experience as possible, even though um, you don't have to be accurate. You can just like randomly uh, putting your pen and paper on the ground and, and start iterating and sketching. Basically, this tool is for you to be replacing your sketchbook. Um, the tools that are on the top, the two uh, on the top of the toolbar, is basically the gallery, which you can be creating a new sketches, open and save sketches. The good thing about the new version of the Formit Pro is that you can save now all of your sketches in the BIM 360 document management on the BIM 360 platform, or locally saving it into your account which is making it a lot easier for you to be collaborating with your um, engineers and subcontractors. I'm going to my BIM 360 document management and uh, to show you whenever I was saving my uh, project and iterations, it was automatically creating um, a folder in my project files and inside of that all of the iterations are going to be saved with the version control of all of them. Um, some more th tools. You can import any of those iterations that you're working from the other softwares or you can export this into uh, 3D printers, um, SolidWorks projects, um, uh, BX, BXM files, uh, SAT files, SketchUp files, they are very compatible with each other. Uh, beside the gallery tool, you are going to be having um, the re undo and redo of um, commands and um, selection. So these are not a special, it's very self-explanatory. Measurement to tools, creating a section. Uh, you're going to be creating different kind of uh, 2D elements, 3D regular elements. Um, you're going to be having some modifications on your um, regular elements and things that, that are very special in the, in the format, which is really sweet are the commands that are making your life a lot easier while sketching uh, by using the grouping commands. The other thing that what I, I have been longing a lot for uh, having some, some capability that is compatible with Revit altogether is the location control of your project. As you can see, basically it is going to be uh, bringing in the um, the satellite imagery of uh, wherever you are and whatever address that you're going to be 
uh, typing in, it is going to uh, bring in that address and it's going to be pinning it on your um, on the Google imagery uh, part of it. Basically, just like Google, you're going to be having a roadmap of that or a detailed look actually from above, just like walking in the street. You can see all of the labels and the addresses that are around, or you can disable them so there's no text inside of your project. And basically, you can zoom in and out of whatever that you're going to be having. So I'm going to have this block for my understanding, and I'm going to make this block to be center and imported the satellite image in, in my project. I can basically zoom in and out just like when I'm zooming in and out in AutoCAD. Put that center on your project and finish importing. And if you're going to go on the top view of your project, the satellite imagery is right there. So I can basically start right away drawing all of my uh, shapes and files. And I'm going to be creating um, all of my iterations. And as I'm going to go through it, I'm going to explain um, how is it going to help you and what, what are each of those tools um, available and helping you. So, um, Right now, I am at the uh, at the basic two D diamond two D iteration of my uh, project. Um, my my face is uh, graded just like uh, any other program, just like AutoCAD. Um, I'm going to be having access to any of those six different views of uh, what I'm going to have. Uh, even from the bottom view, if you are going to be having any kind of uh, different iterations, you can be creating a 3D view, just like the view cube in um, AutoCAD and Revit. And basically, the navigation tools are basically exactly the same. Even though, if you're not um, if you're not com uh, con comfortable with the uh, regular navigation tools you are going to be having some more navigation tools in here. You can zoom to fit to the project. You can zoom out of your project or zoom in. Using these tools, you can basically orbit around or have you to look at your project or pan. Right now, I'm using my keyboard and uh, middle mouse button to go around my uh, elevations. Uh, you are going to be having this option to fly around the area. This is especially very good for areas that you're going to have on an interior spaces or, um, or communities uh, that you're going to have uh, moving controls. and basically I can go around. So these are basically navigation tools. Um, another very good um, um, tools that you're going to have um, is that if you're going to be um, having, a, tool, uh, having a, a team that are uh, basically on different offices across Canada or even like all across the world, you can be collaborating with them. Exactly the same collaboration that you're going to do um, in uh, Word, for example, Office 365 uh, projects. Um, if you're going to go on on your toolbar and you can uh, you can create uh, join an existing session, or if you are uh, the team uh, project owner, uh, you can invite others to be collaborating on the same uh, on the same platform. 
and everybody just keep iterating on the same file at the same time. Um, the people who are not at their uh, laptops, they are having this capability to be with the uh, with their tablets or uh, iPads and keep iterating on them using their finger fingertips. Um, and then there is also this um, uh, this uh, option for uh, changing if you are going to have. Um, the monitor of the touchstone, you can make it to the touch mode. So let's go ahead and get our uh, feet dirty. I'm going to be creating um, a couple of uh, these buildings with lines. So as I said to you, each of these um, um, iteration commands are um, having uh, a shortcut. You can hover over them for creating the shortcuts and if you want to get the uh, get all of the shortcuts together you're going to have access to them through the settings down in here and then down in here okay so i'm going to be creating just a box making that box um, to be bigger. So hovering your mouse over any of those certain areas, uh, it is going to uh, instantly make you accessing that area. If I'm going to be double clicking, I'm going to get the whole, uh, the whole shape selected. If I'm going to um, escape, um, it is getting everything that was selected unselected. You can hover your mouse over one face and drag the face however you, you want. And um, it is going to be adding or decreasing areas from that one. You can be um, keep uh, iterating and having like a mind uh, math math, or basically you can select on any of the edges and go to the properties and basically the length is given to you. If you're going to hover your mouse over the edges and select the edges, you can be creating the edges up. And holding shift is going to be locking that proportions for you. So um, you're not basically uh, free, making the free iterations to um, like uh, free trapezoid shapes. If you're selecting on the uh, axis of those elements, you're going to have um, an access, axis connection. You can basically create a lot of sketches on different faces uh, to be creating some more detailed elements. If you're going to go on um, define and define it, holding down shift is going to be making parallel lines for you that um, later on it is going to be making that available for you for some more detailed iteration. You can be having um, things locked at, at that level for yourself. So you, you're going to be creating that, uh, those corners for, um, for, for the detailed one. You're going to have different kind of surfaces away from each other to be designed differently. And for the cleanups, you can be having the access to make any of those lines to be available for your next sketch.
So basically, you can be creating a very clean sketch using all of these line tools and commands. Let's say you're going to be having um, another um, kind of shape, such as a column outside of your drawing. You will be able to iterate them uniquely. And then you will be able to adjust the height of them according to your, your building, basically selecting that and going up and down and moving away to that surface, which is going to be aligned to. So therefore, it is going to be aligned with the similar height. Uh, some more iteration commands. Um, you can add and, uh, and join two different geometries you, using the Boolean command or uh, the subtraction command. So if you're going to have both of these available, you can basically double click on it, move it very easily. And then you can make both of these selected using shift and make it together. You can group items. Any of those group items um, is making your uh, level of iteration a lot easier. Um, let's think about um, a staircase, for example. If you're going to have um, one small staircase, And uh, you are going to have this to be arrayed um, on the top. So arraying command and any other com editing command that you are going to be working with with your solid model is basically um, selecting your um, selection, your form, and right clicking on it. And anything that, um, in any of the iteration uh, formula that you are, um, it is going to give you customizable editing command. For example, if I'm going to uh, hover my mouse over an edge and right click on it, my um, editing commands are totally different than when I'm going to be double clicking on my shape and editing command. Um, this is going to be customizable. So, I want to be arraying um, this shape to be creating like a staircase. I'm going to be double clicking on it, selecting that, and we are going to be making this array command. Uh, exactly like Revit, uh, you can have linear or radial command. You can select the number of copies that you want to be seeing. Um, you can select the total length of the um, creation or uh, the length be between the copies. Just like AutoCAD and Revit, you can group each of those solids um, that you're going to be arraying um, individually, or you can group them together so that they're going to be grouped together. I'm going to OK that. I'm going to select this. and my staircase is just created with one click of a button. Um, 
uh, actually groups are um, a lot of power, powerful tools that I haven't seen in any of the other softwares before. If I'm going to be creating this cube, and I want to be having a, an exact cube again, um, either I'm going to be select double clicking on it, copying and pasting it outside of it, or I'm going to hold on to it and clicking control and bringing it back. Um, you can uh, group all of these uh, forms together using the group command, select all of them. Either go to create a group or right click on it and create a group out of them. And now I, I changed the behavior of all of those shapes. Um, if I'm going to go out of the group command, and select any of those uh, faces. Inside of the group command is possible. or I'm going to be making these two groups, editing inside of the group. And uh, do a lot of different things. A scale, for example, if I'm going to be selecting any of these uh, elements and scale them up or selecting the whole cube and then scale them the group is giving you this capability to be editing it within if I'm going to ungroup everything together. I'm going to right click and ungroup it. And if I want to be creating these two cubes differently from all of those other cubes, I can make them unique. So that if I'm going to go back to this um, selection, sorry, bear with me one second. Oops, sorry. These are not grouped together. Um, 
So basically, whenever you're going to be creating any of those, uh, any of the uh, elements, um, it's best if you group them because if, let's say on this iteration, I'm not having this grouped. So um, this is basically not part of the group. So if I'm going to be creating um, a sub face out of this face and I'm going to be bringing this out next time I'm going to be selecting that um, that subsection both of the groups are going to be selected whereas if you're going to be grouping this element and you're going to be having the same amount, the same uh, iteration of the subsection again, selecting on that item is going to make that item separated and independent. Um, this comes in very handy when you're going to have a lot of different uh, iterations, but the same amount of uh, elements over and over and over again, such as your doors and windows inside of your projects or um, the columns that later on you want to be individually edit that. Um, this was um, the creation of uh, elements and manipulation of the elements. Um, let me stop right here and ask the audience if you're having any questions so far. Okay, so seems that questions will be, it's in the coming. Yeah, yes? hi, Ms. Donati, and there's nobody's posted any questions yet, but if anyone who's watching does, feel free to fill them out in that question section and under the GoToWebinar sort of main sort of user interface there. Um, and we'll, we'll get to most of them at the end if there are any questions. Uh, but there's Excellent. nothing right now, Ms. Han. Excellent, thank you very much. So um, the other powerful tool um, inside of the, um, the format is the power of the nested elements. Um, not only you can create all of these uh, shapes inside of the group, but inside of those groups, you can be having some more group of their own. And if you're going to be, let me actually uh, go back a little bit. and make this a group of nested elements. So I'm going to be creating everything and inside of that uh, group you see that if you if I'm uh, double clicking inside of the group, everything else is going to be kind of modulized and grayed out, and um, I am able to be uh, changing anything inside of that that group. I'm going to be selecting only this and copy and paste it and put it outside. Now, if I'm going to change any of those elements on that subject,
Whereas this unique group you can be changing each of them individually. If you are double clicking outside of your group, it is going to be um, getting out in, in the public. Um, Format is, is very compatible with group of elements that you're going to be creating in um, Revit, and uh, in, in AutoCAD, you can export the materials um, into uh, meshes, into solids, and into a lot of different other iterations. Um, so, so far that I was creating, if I'm going to be selecting any of, hover, hovering my mouse over one of these um, stairs and pressing tab to select everyone, all of these. Um, First of all, I can name my group of elements to be easily uh, accessible. I can change the group number and change the layer that these uh, groups are on. It is going to be calculating the volume and the area by level of each of them. If this, is, this iteration is going to be just like a building, it is going to be creating the area of square footage and the gross area on my land. If I'm going to export this, it is giving me, basically, uh, it is giving me the native um, um, expression of, extension of, uh, of uh, format but at the same time it is going to give me a lot of very useful tool dxf uh, export for example obg export obj export which is um, the, the mesh of no, no material selection and that is universally selected universally supported for all of those other iteration tools um, it is giving me a SketchUp ex exportation. So you can basically create all of your materials and um, iterations that are going to be compatible with masses and export it in SketchUp. And you can import your SketchUp model, which I'm going to be talking about in, in a few minutes. You can export it as a DWG file and etc etc a lot of you can export this whole thing as an image for your presentation um i am actually opening up the revit tool to tell you how it is easily compatible with revit Hi, Masan. While that's opening up, we do have a question about uh, units. Uh, does Formit recognize, you know, if you set a measurement like this wall is 12 feet, does it know what 12 feet is? Yes, yes, exactly. Um, that's a very question, very good question. Thank you very much for asking. Um, under your settings, the units are, um, are, are created, so you can be selecting on feet and inches or inches or all of those metric units, some more settings throughout the, um, the tool. At the same time, um, everything that you're going to be working with in uh, format, it is going to be uh, honored in SketchUp and Revit in terms of uh, elevation. As you can see in here, you can be creating uh, different levels at different elevation. And, it, and as you are actually working your way through it, it is calculating the area of square footage for the building permits and etc. I hope I answered your question. Okay, so Revit is here. I'm going to be creating a new file. Um, using the architectural template. 
um, again, all of these tools that are the, about the compatibility with, with Revit is, is absolutely free. You can go to add-ins and um, um, add the RFA converter from the format. So basically, when you're going to be saving this as, um, you can export the, your uh, uh, your creation as an RFA down in uh, in the format. And when you're going to go in the Revit, bring it, uh, convert this RFA file to format convert the SketchUp file or import it as a basic Revit file. If you're importing that file inside of your Revit, um, not only the levels and, as I said to you before, the elevations are going to be honored in Revit and they are absolutely compatible, but with a click of a button using the massing and site and all of these curtain wall commands and roof commands and wall and floor commands, you're fabricating your design in a matter of five minutes. And it's free, what's better than that? The other thing I wanted to talk to you about and touch base on is uh, the two different tools that are very powerful, um, which is making the format stand out um, ahead of the game is um, the uh, shadow and sun studies of any of the buildings that you're going to have and the energy uh, gener uh, gener generation of the insight and sustainability energy. Now, this is um, a little bit different uh, kind of insight that the insight tool that you have inside of your Revit. Uh, which is basically for the, the full analysis of your building and uh, components and energy modeling of the building. This is basically um, the preliminary um, uh, analysis of your building. The tool is only going to be in Formit Pro. So the, if you're running the web version of it, the insight analysis, the uh, the case, the uh, shadow analysis and the collaboration tool is not going to be uh, a part of regular format. And uh, so you can basically, whatever that you have created, you can basically create the shadow cases and sun studies. And you can say which day of the year is right now, let's say, 5th of January, 5th of June, and at 4 p.m., and it's actually running a solar analysis on your design. You can basically put and change the position of the sun with comparison of where is the location um, that you're going to have. Um, and the location is actually honored in, inside the, the tool. Um, just as I was putting the location on um, Calgary, uh, it, and, it, and it is inside of the daylight uh, saving time plan, it is actually accounting for that day daylight saving time. And it is actually showing you where the sun is inside of your site and how the casting shadow of your site is casting on the vicinity buildings, um, just in case you wanted to perform a sun studies. Um, another very good tool that you, you will be having, basically, let me actually cancel this. I'm going to bring in a SketchUp model inside of my project. So I can basically import and I have a SketchUp model here.
test a couple of seconds. So the SketchUp model came in and um, everything, all of those component libraries that you were working with the SketchUp is actually um, added to your project. On the top of that, everything, all of those materials that was used inside of that SketchUp model is automatically coming in both Formit and Revit material browsers. Um, I want to show you how you can basically double check if your the SketchUp file that you have been creating 10 years ago is still valid in, in terms of um, the compatibility and uh, the validity of the design inside of the format. So I'm going to basically select one of those groups of the elements. and edit the group. And take a look at the first, um, the first uh, level of the model. And I want to know if this design is water, watertight. So I'm going to go on the settings of my menu bar and take a look at the identify the watertight issue. And all of those areas that are problematic, these are the analysis tools that, that uh, Formit has. And it's not completely tight. Not only it is going to be turning red, but I'm actually having a um, a tool down in here that it can seal them. And I'm going to show you this. This tool, it is going to be covering all of those problematic areas, you know, garbage, garbage in, garbage out, right? So then this is going to run around that surface model and water tights it for you so that later on, if you can, if you're going to be exporting this, oops, sorry. If you're going to be exporting this to, um, let's say, a SAT file, for example, which has to be completely um, flat and completely watertight for the 3D printers and uh, the other softwares that has to be completely out of the mesh model, uh, it is going to be compatible. If you're going to bring this to uh, Revit and run an MEP analysis, for example, or a water analysis on it, it is going to be fixing it inside the format before you're inserting it into Revit. Um, the energy analysis is the last thing that I wanted to talk to you about. I, I put the sweetest one to, for the last. So uh, basically, you're going to be having this, a lot of good insight about your design. Uh, what is the orientation of your project? What is the orientation with, with the relationship uh, with the sun? Um, how you're going, what is the wind blowing at your design? Um, how are you going to be uh, controlling the different sustainability issues, the way you are going to be reiterating and reiterating and reiterating your design before you're submitting your case to the fabricators or engineers and energy modelers? This is a good insight tools for uh, getting to know everything from the very beginning of your iteration project. So if the orientation, if your uh, address, or if the site is, is not performing well inside of the energy analysis and energy modeling, 
uh, you can catch your mistakes earlier, sooner than later. Um, this is basically the same tool that the Insight 360 has inside of your Revit. Um, and it takes a little bit of time to be performing. So when I'm going to be generating the Insight model, um, for, for a small project like this, at, it at least takes 20 minutes for this to go on the cloud and come back. But fortunately, I have another project for you that uh, was generated, and I'm going to show you the different um, the different options and the different uh, catching um, cards that uh, you're going to have, and you and it's it's going to give you insights. So, for example, right now this building that I have is using 23.3 um, watts for, for, sorry, not watts, um, the ki kilowatt hours per square meter per year. And then um, the cost of it as per 2019, it is going to be 23.3 uh, USD per square meter per year. Um, the reason that I have a lot of different dash cards is that I have the control over uh, each of these uh, cards that I have access to for the building orientation, for example, um, southern walls, um, because my, my project is located in Calgary and south sun is very important in Calgary, window glasses, northern walls. Um, all of those glass iterations of them glazing, the window to wall ratio, um, shading, how, how much shading are you actually using inside of your project, um, the wall construction. And when you're going to be selecting each of those cards, it is showing you the iteration where in the in the generalized area iteration is is located in and when you're going to be generating different forms of your iterations how is it going to be affecting the energy cost and the energy actually right now my design is terrible <laughs> It's not very happy, um, but but it as as the energy is going down, it is going to give you a lot more better insight. If you're selecting any of those dashing grades and changing it to constraint of whatever that you're going to, it is going to only play with that area of the design that you're working with. Um, so this is all of these different options that you have for the format. Um, I hope that I covered almost everything that you are having access to. Um, if you are having any other questions, I will be here to answer you. Thank you, Masan. Uh, so yeah, we've got a couple minutes left if people wanted to ask any questions in the uh, in the question tab there. Uh, I'm going to be throwing up my screen again because um, that has my contact info as well as Masan. So if questions come up uh, as you're thinking about this after the webinar ends, uh, you'll be able to reach us and hopefully we'll be able to get to you guys and answer your questions. So I'm just going to leave this up here for, for a minute until the end of the webinar. And we'll hold out to see if anyone's got any questions. But, but the, it seems like the tool has become a lot more powerful from what it was. Yes, yes. There is progress every month, actually. Yeah. So these these cloud products that Autodesk releases, you don't have to wait for the annual updates every year. Um, they, they're improving them constantly, and updates get pushed out as soon as they're ready. So there's there's quick changes coming all the time. So there is that a is question: correct. Can Formit replace SketchUp? <laughs> kind of the idea, but the song is a little more. <laughs> actually, deep. actually, this is a really powerful uh, statement that if you are going into an AEC collection, 
um, all of these tools, not only it is actually free uh, if, if you're like downloading the add-ins, um, but the, the whole tool will be free for you. Um, and right now that like a SketchUp used to be free, uh, right now Trimble bought it and it's not unfortunately free anymore. Um, if you're taking advantage of everything that SketchUp can do, and you will be having it free much better than that. There's one last question here, then we'll have to close it off. Um, so what are the weaknesses of Formit? How does it deal with complex curves and how does it work with Dynamo? That's a very probably good can't question. go super in depth, but the message is from Julie. We probably can set up something if they want to know more. Absolutely. Quick answer. Sure. Um, the complex curve um, is actually true. I have been working with um, a lot of different organic shapes. Um, if you are going to be working again, my word of advice for you is uh, group different lines and different shapes and surfaces as you are going through your organic shape and always have them uh, organized to be group and subgroups that when you're going to be working with any of those uh, in nested groups inside of your, your groups, um, it is going to be organized because uh, once the program, just like, um, just like the SketchUp, the, the program is, is basically um, designed for a free uh, free designing tool, free lining up. As I said to you before, the SketchUp is meant for substituting your free hand sketching. Um, so, and and as you can you, you can see, the program and computer is always working with, with organization. The Dynamo, uh, the Dynamo uh, connection of it, uh, yes, Dynamo is absolutely compatible, as you can see on your right-hand side of your uh, viewing bar. Um, a lot of already created Dynamo scripts is already downloaded. It, it didn't, uh, this version, the new version of Formit is completely compatible. Uh, Dynamo is inherited inside of the software, whereas like the, the previous ones, you have to add a plugin. It's not a plugin, it's completely compatible right now. Okay, so I hope that answered everybody's question uh, questions. We have to wrap up here, we've gone a little bit over time. So thank you everybody who has uh, joined us for the session about Formit. And again, if you have any questions, please reach out to us. Our Contact information is on the screen. Have a great day, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you, everybody. Bye.